This week, I've been driving this 2024 Cadillac CT5 V Blackwing. You guys always ask me, what's my favorite car that I've ever driven? Well, this is up there. This is in the top five. I think this is the best one car solution on sale today. This and the M5 CS are very, very close, but the Cadillac offers a six speed manual and that's what we have today. We have a 6.2 liter supercharged V8 up front making 668 horsepower, six speed manual, limited slip differential in the back, heated ventilated seats, all the comforts of home. We have a 16 speaker AKG premium audio system in here. It's not cheap. Starting price on this is about $96,000, $97,000 with the gas guzzler tax and freight and everything. This car it has $22,000 worth of options. It's, uh, it's a lot of carbon fiber. The carbon fiber and interior suede package is about eight grand. This is painted in cyber yellow metallic, which uh, is a shocking color to behold. I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> Beauty's definitely in the eye of the beholder. There are definitely many other colors that are offered in the Cadillac CT5 V Blackwing that I would take over this, but it definitely is a bit of an attention grabber and reminds me of some of uh, BMW's M3 colors back in the day. Uh, and I guess they have something similar today. So maybe a bit of a, a stab at BMW, not sure. Still a great looking car, despite the color, in my opinion. <laughs> Quad exhaust tips in the back. This active exhaust is just expertly tuned. Sounds fantastic. We have a bunch of different modes. Love the stance. Today we're on winter tires. I actually did get a chance to drive this in the snow earlier this week, and we'll have a video coming out on those driving impressions here soon, if not already. 275 35R19s up front. These are Pirelli Soto Zero performance winter tires and they actually put the power down pretty well in the CT5V Blackwing. In the rears we have 295 30R19s, so a bit more rubber back there. Carbon ceramic brakes, that's a $9,000 option. This is getting refreshed next year. We're getting a slightly different front bumper, uh, new interior screen situation. Should be nice. I don't really have too many complaints about the CT5V Blackwing. There's a couple, but they're minor and we'll talk about those once we get on the road. In the back seat, we have a ton of space. Comfort for everyone in here. These carbon fiber seat backs are gorgeous, but is this interior package worth $8,000? I don't know if it is. The Alcantara, the seat stitching, the custom work here is nice, but I don't really know if I care about that as much as I care about how good this is to drive. Let's pop the hood. We'll take a look at the 6.2 liter supercharged V8. We've done a number of videos on the CT5 V Blackwing in the last couple years. We took this out to the Gingerman Raceway to take it out on the track. It performed phenomenally. We've driven it on the street. We've driven it in the snow now. So let's sum up some thoughts in this video and talk about what this is like to live with daily drive. This is rated for about 15 miles to the gallon combined, 13 in the city, 21 on the highway. I've been averaging low to mid 20s in this on the highway, and my combined average this week driving pretty conservatively is about 18 miles to the gallon, which is very impressive. It says the 20 year anniversary badge, uh, which includes a few other things in the interior. We'll put all the information in the description, all those little details. Oh, we've got a button to pop the trunk here. Let's do that. Don't mind all my photography equipment in the back, but a good amount of space back here, room for golf clubs. You can fold down the seats, 60-40 split. Uh, I don't know if there's really much going on underneath this. Again, we've shown that in previous videos. I like this grab handle though, to swing the trunk down. Bit of a sleeper with this sedan. If you don't know what it is, you might not notice it other than it's just a very smart looking Cadillac. Fully digital gauge cluster. And then we get to one of my only complaints about the CT5V Blackwing. It's just the screen and Cadillac's addressing that next year. Going into CarPlay, Android Auto, it's just a little bit low contrast. Looks a bit cheap. Um, and it's kind of down to the viewing angle. It's a bit strange. Cheapens the feel of this interior slightly. 
But that said, CarPlay this week has worked well. The connectivity, the tech, everything has been fine. So we're probably just gonna leave it right here. I like this physical volume knob, the selection dial, the home button, that is nice to have. We get a bunch of different drive modes. I will show you guys my mode today. Pretty much everything's in soft, except for engine sound. And then when I put it in V mode, ramps things up a bit. Engine sound is at max, engine shift, brake feel, those are all on track. Suspension's in sport, steering is in tour. We get quite a bit of burbles on the overrun in V mode, uh, which can be a little bit excessive sometimes. I like that you can adjust that. In my mode, in with the exhaust just in sport, that sounds pretty good actually. So lots of different drive modes here. Gauge cluster is a little bit laggy, switching between the graphics. You get different gauges depending on your drive mode, or you can just keep the same gauge layout irrespective of drive mode. That's a setting that you can change in preferences. Lots of different settings in this car. You can set it to automatically heat and cool your seats when you get in, depending on the temperature outside. Right now, what I get in this, heated seats go on full blast. Heated steering wheel goes on max. It's nice and toasty pretty quickly in the CT5e Blackwing. One thing that does not default to on when you start up the vehicle is rev matching. So you have to press that button yourself. And uh, actually, this is a pretty, pretty nice and satisfying manual to drive and rev match yourself. So we'll do a little bit more of that once we get on the road. Good amount of storage. Love these cup holders. These fit my water bottle nice and snugly. Got seat crumb collectors here. Lots of adjustability with these seats. Nice black wing logo right there. Red seat piping, custom stitching in here, and the carbon fiber seat backs are great. No sunroof, nice looking mirror. I mean, all the comforts of home that you would expect in a very nice luxury vehicle, just with the performance and driving experience of a sports car, almost a supercar. All right, let's go for a drive and let's see what this thing can do on the street. And let's talk about what it's been like to live with this week. Subsidy Topher reviewing the new Toyota Tacoma that we had this week. Did not plan this. He just showed up, blowing up his film spot. Ride quality. The magnetic ride control here is just awesome. This car is so comfortable in tour mode. It stiffens up slightly in sport. Track gets a little bit firm, but it never beats you up. This is some of the most sophisticated feeling suspension I've ever experienced on the road and on track. It works great. This car is easy to drive smoothly. Shifter just feels perfect. This is basically the same driving experience you get out of a Camaro ZL1, but in a much more usable and friendly package. It doesn't bite you as much. It's a lot more stable. This V8 just sounds fantastic. No supercharger whine. Let's turn off rev matching. Do some of these downshift blips ourselves. Awesome throttle response. Brake pedal feel, excellent. I have noticed that this week, coming into some corners hot, I haven't quite gotten the bite out of these carbon ceramics that I would like. That could be because I was approaching the limitations of these winter tires, or it could just be that these brakes haven't properly been bedded in yet. I noticed that on the AAA Corvette E-Ray drive, we needed to pretty much just take the cars out on track to get those carbon ceramics to work well. And I assume this is a similar copper-free braking system. So, as a result, as if I was doing heavy, heavy track work, I probably wouldn't swing for the carbon ceramics. The regular steel brakes seem to be like they would just do the trick just fine.
there is torque everywhere in this powertrain. Fifth gear, cruising at 45 miles an hour. <laughs> You're just off, it's amazing. Sixth gear is very tall. That drops you down at just cruising RPM. That's why this can get 23, 24, 25 miles to the gallon on the highway, depending on how fast you're going. It's pretty quiet at speed, not a lot of intrusion, noise over bumps. Roads are pretty bad right now in Michigan. We've seen a lot of freeze thaw cycles recently. Exhaust just sounds gnarly. Let's put it into V mode, ramp things up a little bit. Suspension and sport. Easy to heel toe downshift. Oh, we also get a head up display. You can adjust brightness your info, all with the press of a button right down there, as well as height. I love that. You don't have to dip into the infotainment to adjust your head-up display. Very nice. I turned it off last night because I was driving in the dark and it was kind of blocking my view of potholes ahead as I was dodging them on the highway. say if you have larger feet or larger shoes or boots on going from the clutch to the dead pedal is a bit of a tight fit it's a, it's a narrower space so if you have really wide feet or large shoes you might struggle a little bit putting that foot on the dead pedal something to note if you're gonna get the manual transmission in the CT5V Blackwing I had a pretty hefty set of boots on last night everything's muddy everything's melting after the snow earlier this week. And it was just something that I started to notice with those bigger boots on. Traction control, stability control. We have lots of different traction control modes, which you can control right here on the steering wheel. Cuts timing, makes some awesome noises. Absolutely insane performance here. <laughs> it's one of the few cars that I would argue is a little bit too fast for the street. But that's the thing that I love about the CT5e Blackwing is that I've barely driven this hard this week. I've been driving it like a grandpa. I've just been enjoying the experience. And it's one of the few cars with this level of performance that you can enjoy driving at regular speeds like a normal human being. It is just a pleasure to experience. It feels so well sorted. All your feedback, all of your inputs are just so nicely calibrated. And then every now and then you give it just a little bit of throttle. It's really good, you guys. I would buy one of these someday. Low speed brakes are great. You get up into higher speeds and they do struggle some. Shift. That's a good time. 
<laughs> Just keep your foot down and jam that clutch pedal in between gear changes. Oh, it's so satisfying. Rev matching is very good, very smooth left to its own devices. It'll even rev match into first at slightly higher speeds. First gear goes almost to 60 miles an hour. Maybe it does go to 60 miles an hour. So there's some, there's some taller gearing here, but I do find myself shifting when I'm driving around town all the way up into fifth pretty often. There's just so much torque here that you can just Accelerate it just about any RPM. One complaint that I do have with this car, when you're not in V mode and you're driving spiritedly, let's say, you're getting a little bit of wheel slip out of a corner, you're kicking the tail sideways, the seat belt will cinch up on you very quickly, very immediately, and kind of cause a little bit of panic in addition to maybe the situation that you've put the car in. And it's not the most pleasant thing. So if you're driving fast, if you're driving hard, you're gonna to wanna to put this car into V mode. Cruising on the highway. Oh. It's very nice, very, very comfortable. Suspension soaks up all the bumps. I have good steering feel. The revs just sit below 2000 RPM. And this just kind of sips fuel at a normal rate. When you really start driving this car hard, it's gonna absolutely chug it. But until then, it's surprisingly fuel efficient this week. You can quiet down the exhaust into stealth mode and you barely hear it. Let's do that. Let's go into tour. Uh, we'll turn traction back on. It's funny, in tour mode, you actually lose your tachometer. You just get a speedometer and you can change the head-up display to show you a rev counter, but that's about it. But the exhaust is nice and muted in tour mode. Put it to my mode here. What about driving in the winter? Well, that video is pretty self-explanatory, but I'll give you guys a summary. These Pirelli Soto Zero Performance winter tires didn't do great in the snow. They got me through it, but if you're going up hills, if you're in deep snow, it's gonna struggle. It's definitely gonna struggle a lot. So I think, you know, if you're gonna be driving this in the winter, you're probably gonna want a winter tire that's a bit more aggressive and more steered towards snow driving as opposed to performance driving. I will say this tire puts its power down incredibly well in the in the dry, and it does pretty well in the wet too, considering the power from this car. On a more hardcore winter tire, it would struggle to put its power down in the dry. That's not the case. A little bit more understeer from a tire with less grip, as you would expect. But still, it remains very neutral. You can kind of balance this car's character while lifting off the throttle. It's, it's just very, very good to drive. Daily driving. Right now, we're just kind of flowing with traffic on a 45 mile an hour road, starting off from a red light. Clutch uptake, so easy to start off smoothly in this car. Gear changes, again, so easy to drive this without any lurches. When you start pushing hard, you have to be careful and you have to be precise with your shifting action and your clutch work. But when you're just cruising in this, it is so pleasant to live with. 
The rumble from the 6.2 liter supercharged V8 is fantastic. I love the vibrations and the feeling that you get when you're just driving this car regularly around town. It's so satisfying. Rev matching works great. I will say one thing that's a little bit strange is when you do have rev match engaged and you put it into neutral when you're coming to a stop, sometimes the car will give it a little bit of a, a blip, a bit of a rev, kind of like, <laughs> If we hit another traffic light, I'll show you guys what I mean. It does it sometimes, it doesn't do it all the time. So we're downshifting here into fourth, into third. Into second. Put it in neutral. It didn't do it. Sometimes it'll just go like that. <laughs> The unpredictability of it, I think, is charming. You know, I've got to say, after living with this for the week, the reason I do what I do is a personal journey and a journey for all of you to kind of find that perfect car. You know, we want to drive everything so we can tell you guys what's the best car to buy in this segment or in this you know category. But also, we do this for a selfish reason because it's it's a bit of a journey, you know? We, we want to know what is what does the perfect driving experience feel like. And this gets really close. Nothing quite gets it right to the level that this CT5V Blackwing does for the driver. As a satisfying experience for someone who wants a manual transmission, a powerful V8 up front, this is kind of that peak daily driver in my mind. In cold weather this week, the six-speed takes a bit of time to warm up. Shifts into second are clunky. You have to kind of be patient with the gearbox until you've been driving it for about 10 minutes or so. But it has personality, it has character, something that lacks in a lot of modern cars. It has the tech to support what you would want out of a new car at this price point, but it doesn't get in the way it's just, it's just a wonderful, wonderful thing to live with. Miles per hour, you got it right when you bought your CT5V Blackwing. GM has done good six-speed manuals for a long time. This is one of their best. It's been surprisingly fuel efficient. It's been very comfortable. Not for a minute have I felt like the ride is too busy or too stiff. We've got some pretty bumpy roads right now in Michigan. And it's just taken it all in stride. Every single drive that I've taken in this Blackwing, the car has made it enjoyable. I've looked forward to taking this out, even for just little errands. I look for extra excuses to drive this. throttle response is just awesome. Even sitting at a stoplight, the idle, the slight rumble from that V8, it's just so satisfying. Alright, so We've told you just about everything I like about the CT5V Blackwing. Honestly, I think my favorite thing about this car is just how it makes you feel. The vibrations that you get, the feedback that you get through the steering, through the shifter, through the seats, the way this car sounds. It's an emotional driving experience. And it's something that just makes you feel special. And it's a very special car. There's a reason why this has received so many awards, accolades, top picks in the industry. It's just because it is one of the best cars on sale at any price today. And Cadillac has really landed on something special here with the CT5V Blackwing. Uh, the calibration, the tuning, everything is just expertly done. I'm curious to drive the 2025 model to see if the screens change at all. Honestly though, I do like my physical volume knob right there. That is nice. Um, didn't see that in the new photos and videos of the CT5V Blackwing with the update with the refresh. But honestly, you can pick some of these up used now for under $90,000. That might be a pretty good buy. These seem to be holding their value incredibly well, and rightfully so. This is, a, this is an amazing car to live with and spend time in. 
it's honestly one of my favorite driving experiences in the last I don't know since I've been doing this it's uh it's it's really up there so we'll leave this video at that I think let's do a quick walk around show you guys the exterior of this one more time and then we'll do a sound system test with this AKG premium 16 speaker audio system Here's the key. Of course, because this is a manual, there's no remote start. There's no adaptive cruise control. I haven't really missed it this week, if I'm being honest. Honda figured out how to do adaptive cruise control with a manual transmission. Volkswagen figured it out. Cadillac, I'm sure they know how to do it. I'm sure, I just think they refuse to do it, which, which is okay, I guess. It, honestly, in my Civic Type R, I've turned off the adaptive cruise control because it's so terrible. And in this, you just have regular old school cruise control. The, the button layout is very simple, easy to use. You have this gap adjust, which is just silly because it tells you how far away, if you're following too close to the vehicle in front of you, which you could also see if you just look out the windshield. Um, but I mean, that's, that's kind of the only con here is that, okay, maybe the driving assistance tech isn't as amazing as it would be in the automatic car or uh, you know, in some other options in the segment. But honestly, that's not what this is about. This is about the driving experience this is a car for drivers this is for people who want that camaro zl1 or previous gen corvette experience but in a car that they can drive every day take the family around go out to the racetrack on weekends and just do everything with this is this is just one of the best at doing it all that i've ever experienced all right let's test out the sound system we'll drive a little bit more and uh that'll be a wrap on this video thanks so much for watching guys AKG is good. I don't know if it's as good as this V8, but it's pretty good. <laughs> it's the sum of the parts, and then there's that X factor too. This car just delivers so many wins and on so many levels. operation here really quickly very easy to use change one mile an hour at a time or five miles an hour at a time you can even change gears while cruise control is operational which is nice I don't know why you would because it's not adaptive but you could 
You can also switch this display over to a simplified screen. Basically, it gets rid of all the extra stuff on the sides. You can have different gauge pods here telling you tire temperature, coolant temperature, engine temperature, G-force meters, all sorts of different parameters. I actually really like the simplified display. It just gives you all the info you need, nothing else. I love how quickly you can choose your different drive modes, whether it's V mode, you can just press that button, one button press takes you into all of your best performance settings. Switching through the drive modes themselves is a little bit tedious. I've just left it on my mode all week. It'll, the car will start up into whatever drive mode you've left it in previously, which is good. You do get lane keep assist, forward, collision, braking, all that safety suite that you would expect from a modern car. You just don't get adaptive cruise control. With the exhaust in track, or even some of the higher sport modes, the burbles do get a little bit much sometimes, but you can you can adjust that. <laughs> Does sound good though. I actually really like how tall first gear is in this. Most of the time when I'm driving around on 45 mile an hour roads, I'm in fifth. The torque is there, saves fuel. Oh, I guess if you do exit out of V mode, this is a bit of a complaint that I have. It'll take you back into tour, even though you were maybe previously in my mode. And that's a bit annoying. You can also set it so that it doesn't take up your entire screen when you just change drive modes. That's in here. Vehicle settings, drive mode customization, visualization, we can turn that off and it'll just do everything right there. it skips over my mode. I don't really know why. There we go. Yeah, again, kind of tedious to go through all these drive modes. I've just been leaving it in my mode for the most part. I mean, heck, you could even leave it in V mode the whole time, too. There's nothing wrong with that. The adjustability is there, it's just up to you to get it right with your settings and at a point that you're happy with. Alright guys, well that's going to be a wrap for this one. Thanks again for watching. If you can afford it, go buy yourself a CT5V Blackwing. This is the car. This is just one of the best cars ever made. I love it. I have a few complaints, but they don't really matter because, again, best car. <laughs> we'll leave you guys on that note. We'll see you in the next one. Take care. And if you want, go check out the track driving video and some of our previous street driving videos on a different route in this uh, Blackwing. I think that was last year or the year before. They didn't change anything. Uh, in 2025, we'll drive this again, and we'll see what the kind of refreshed interior next year looks like uh, when we get to drive it next. Cool. Take care, guys.